So following on from kind of Google's audience solutions, I just wanted to give a little bit insight into how Google categorizes their audiences. So we've talked about applying audiences um, in market, affinity audiences, etc. But what do these actually mean and how did Google determine who falls into an audience, for example? So if you think of something like an affinity audience, um, there's multiple different ones out there. It might be, you know, people who are, I don't know, interested in the outdoors, for example. So Google collects data. And as we're aware, obviously, Google is the biggest search engine. It has unlimited data going through it. Um, so it basically uses kind of machine learning to understand, you know, people who, for example, might have searched about, I don't know, hiking trails, for example, or where to go camping. Um, or what's the best app for um, creating routes on a new walk and um, things like that they'll collect those kind of data and their system basically recognize that that person who's searching for all these different things is probably interested and or if it's a different orders might be passionate about the outdoors and then they would pop those into an affinity audience that's about the outdoors so if we look at the affinity audiences again um we'll just look at affinity audiences and you can search for a different category as well so if we do a search here i'm typing outdoors we can see for example there's these different audiences we've got in market audiences but if we're thinking about topics and affinity if you scroll down you should get to an affinity segment so there we go outdoor enthusiasts and then basically, if you hover over this as well, it'll give you more intra in insight into what this audience means. So top related audiences, off road vehicles being used, boating and, sa and sailing enthusiasts, YouTube categories include things like campers and bike paths and things like that. So basically, Google's identified people who fall into these different areas, do these different searches, watch these different videos, etc., are probably going to fall into people who like the outdoors. So if you were a company who, I don't know, sold bikes, for example, bikes, bike helmets, um, off-road bikes, all that kind of stuff, you'd potentially want to have this affinity audience as um, an audience within your targeted campaign. And it works with that across kind of all the ways that it works. So you've got the in-market segment as well. Um, so I don't know, let's say that um, somebody searched for what do we search for? Uh, fashion. See if anything pops up for fashion. So we've got for in market, we've got formal wear, we've got suits and business attire, we've got children's apparel. And um, so there's quite a lot of things that would fall into fashion. Um, but it's got quite a different few different segments that we can target and probably something that's going to be relevant to your business. So let's just say, for example, you know, you are a company that sells, um, suits and uh, prom style dresses and things like that you're probably going to fall into this formal wear category section and what you'll see here is the typical people in this audience top related audience searches things like bridal wear wedding planning suits and business attire that's going to be really relevant to you so that's an example of an in-market audience so it is very clever technology from google in terms of you know they've built these audiences off the back of how people search and learning, you know, learns over time that had to collect this data and these people typically fall into this segmented audience. So, you know, when we're talking about applying audiences and utilizing this information, it is important to understand what goes behind it and it is data collected and it's not just random things that have been pulled together in a hope that, um, you know, that, that you'll apply them to your campaign, it'll be relevant. There is a, you know, there is the high chance that if you apply one of these audience lists that are predefined from Google, that your audience will sit within it. Um, I just wanted to also make a note about obviously the automated bidding that Google has. So, so conversion based strategies, so uh, like target CPA and things like that. Um, although you know Google will automatically optimize towards the audiences, um, I would still recommend that you have these audiences applied to your campaigns at least in 
in observation mode to have a look at what's going on and potentially segment them in the future as well um, into specific targeted campaigns with the overlay of the bid strategy as well. So that's an insight into Google Ads audiences. Um, I hope it's helpful. I hope you've got an audience in there that you search for and you feel is relevant and can apply to your campaigns. Um, like I say, get adding them in observation mode anyway, start learning about who your audience are, start learning about what different segments they sit within and keep learning. Hi guys, welcome back to the course. Today I wanna to talk through Google Ads customer match data. So to give an intro to um, Google's customer match data, um, basically it's important to learn more about who your customers are both from an online perspective and an online perspective and basically how you can address their needs. So customer match helps you reach customer segments of your existing customers and basically deliver a tailored message when it's most relevant to them. Uh, so what you do is basically you upload your first party customer data, which is then used to match against Google users. I'd say customer match data is actually super valuable because it's unique to your business and it comes directly from your customers. So you're not going to get more kind of bespoke data than that. And using Google's customer match feature helps you to reach the customers that you that you upload the data from basically to re-engage with them but also to potentially find new customers just like them um, across google's platforms so search shopping gmail youtube and display so why would you invest in customer match so rather than just relying on google's data which i feel we've probably been forced a little bit more down that route with kind of all the automation and things like that we're getting a lot more a lot less sorry control over what we're doing from a ppc point of view but rather than just relying on the google data that we have and insights about your customers from there customer match lets you use your obviously your first party data to share the unique insights that you have about your customers so beyond what google understands it's giving you a little bit of the power back i guess so this can help you to obviously deepen your existing customer relationships across all of the Google properties. And just a note as well, I think it's something that's become kind of increasingly important um, due to some of the privacy browser and regulation changes that we've seen over the past kind of year, few months, etc. So some of the benefits of using customer match. So as I've just mentioned on the previous slide there, um, obviously you can build deeper relationships with your customers. You can connect with your existing customers for with another product or service that they might like. So think of it as an opportunity to either upsell. So if it's a customer that's bought something from you before, you might want to upsell a, another product or cross-sell a product that you feel like they might also be interested in. You can use it to find new customers similar to your um, existing customers or even your best customers so you can you know you can upload different styles of lists and group your customers how you see fit. Um, you can show existing customers obviously special offers, offers messaging, etc. So to re-engage with them, um, which links into the next section, which is obviously re-engaging with uh, your lapsed customers or so customers who you might have had um, loyal loyalty from in the past and no longer do. So you want to re-engage with those where possible. And it can also aid Google signals in smart bidding. So this really just helps to feed the machine learning from a Google point of view. So what we'll do now is I'm going to jump into the Google Ads interface just to give you an insight into how you create a customer match list. Um, so you do create it using uh, just a CSV file, including the customer data, and you upload it directly into Google Ads. Um, there is a template available, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. Um, but it is important to make sure that you successfully use your customer data file, that you ensure that you format your customer data correctly. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you how that looks just now so if we pop over into google ads so if you just navigate to your ads.google.com um you'll come to your normal interface so i'll just pop out here so you come to your overview tab and uh the top ha right hand side in your tools and settings you've got the shared library section and your audience manager so this is where we're going to go to look at adding a customer match audience list 
Um, so if you haven't got any audiences, it'll look kind of blank like this. You might have already created some audiences already, but um, you click on the plus sign and the option we're going to choose now is the customer list. So you can name your audience segment and take some time to segment your audience how you feel, how you see fit. Um, you know, you might segment it by, I don't know, um, you know, people who've purchased purchased in the last three months versus, versus people who've purchased 12 months ago, for example. So, you know, some people might be more easier to re-engage versus other. Um, you might have customers who've bought a higher price ticket item that you feel like that category should be segmented to people who purchase your lower price point tickets so you can segment them differently. So however you feel fit, or it might just be, um, you know, you might just want to upload all your customers um, as one as one list because, you know, you might not have a huge data pool. Um, but just make sure that you name your audience segment um, accurately so that you know what's included in it. I'm just going to name this test for the example. Uh, that's spell. There we go, test. Um, so information that you want to upload. So you've got a drop down here. Um, so you can upload user IDs, mobile device IDs, etc. The one that I'm going to show you today is via emails, phones, and well, postcodes, basically mailing addresses. Um, and I'm gonna show you the template that we use for that. So all you need to do is you need to make sure that your customer data is formatted on um, a CSV sheet. You can do it in Excel. There is this option here. If you just click this little user template, button here that Google's provided, it will download and it'll look like this. So this is the format that it comes down in and you can just format it so that you've got all the information in that you need. Um, it does give you information at the top here, instructions on exactly what you need to do in terms of adding your data, a little bit about the hashed format and guidelines, etc., which we'll talk about again in a second. But the main thing you need to look at is this bottom section here. So it's already got pre-populated data for you obviously you will update this with whatever data is relevant for you so you need the email address first and last name country code um zip or postcode um it's got email twice there you can take that one out and then you can add in um a phone number if you have that information as well just bear in mind country code um just make sure you look this up i'll pop a link in under the video tutorial here um for google's official list of country codes i made an error the first time i did this because i'm based in the uk i tried to upload with um uk as the country code and it's actually gb so just something to be mindful of just make sure you look up where, wherever it is that you're you're based just make sure you look up the correct country code so once you've filled in information in your file save as a csv wherever you want on your on your computer, laptop, desktop, etc. And then you're going to come up to this option and you've got upload plain text data. So this is, um, I'm using this version where we're just uploading kind of the raw data from your system. Um, so this is plain data and Google will hash it for you, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Um, but you use that option, choose the file and upload it. If you've already got the in-house capabilities to hash your data already, so you might have somebody technical, data-based, in-house, who can already hash your data, so um, that it's already kind of pre-formatted, uh, you can use this upload hash data section. Um, in this scenario, I'm using the plain version. Membership duration, um, I'll talk about, there's no expiration. I'll talk about, again, why uh, before I finish off this session. And then you can have, add a little description here if you want to give more detail about um, what's included in this segment. So it might be customers who bought products over 1K, for example. There we go. You've got a little bit more details about who's included. Then you just click in the upload and create button. So once it's all uploaded, um, you'll see kind of a, a new customer audience list created. It'll be populating for a while. Um, Google doesn't receive the actual email addresses. Um, so Google system transforms the contact information that you have um, for Google accounts, like the email addresses and phone numbers that you saw in that sheet. Um, and then basically in the hashed code. So what I just talked about there in terms of the data being hashed. Um, I've put this note here, SHA256. So this sounds for the Secure Hash Algorithm 256. Um, it's a one-way hashing mechanism um, that is unencrypted by Google. So don't worry, Google won't use your data files for any purpose other than to create your customer match audiences and ensure compliance with their policies. So a couple of things to bear in mind. Um, 
customer match segments um don't expire so when i just when you saw the upload there just a couple of seconds ago and um, it had a membership duration section and um, the membership duration is unlimited by default because it's it's kind of raw customer data that you've populated in there and um, you can control how long your customers are kept in a customer match segment but it is best to refresh your segment kind of as regularly as possible so ideally you want to be doing you know if you've got enough data running through your system um you want to be kind of maybe updating it once a month if possible um, once a quarter depending on you know what you see as most appropriate Google Ads will actually send you an email kind of reminder if your segments haven't been refreshed in a while, so should keep you on track. Um, and you can share your audience segments across multiple manager accounts if you have a customer match uh, segment, a similar segment in your manager account, or a client account shares their customer match segment or similar segment with your manager account. Um, so these similar segments, can, they'll be automatically created um, if your customer match segment meets the minimum eligibility criteria from Google and you can use a, a similar segment the same way that you'd use a customer match uh, list or any other data segment just by adding it to one of your campaigns or our groups um, when a similar segment is available it'll show the segment size on each available network in your audience table like you would see for any audience that you build and just bear in mind that it does or can take up to 48 hours to be eligible to run. So that's um, customer match data. Uh, I hope you find it useful. I think it is very, very, like I mentioned at the start, very valuable for you. Um, if you have got the capabilities to be uploading your customer data, um, I would recommend you do so and try and you know target those audiences across the Google properties. Hey guys, welcome back to the course. So today we're going to be talking through YouTube advertising. And to start off, I'm going to talk you through um, the first thing you have to do before you can actually begin to use um, YouTube ads through the Google Ads interface. So what you need to do is obviously you'll have a YouTube channel and in order to advertise from this, you'll have to do what's called a link. Um, so you'll need to link your YouTube channel and your Google Ads account. There is two ways in which you can do this. Um, you can link via the um, YouTube account or you can link in the Google Ads interface. Today I'm going to show you how to do the link through the Google Ads interface. And it's really important that you do link up your channel because obviously in order to you have to do this in order to, to run your ads um, and see the interactions that you're getting on, on the ads. Um, so how it works basically is when you link a YouTube uh, channel to your Google Ads account, the YouTube channel owner, so the one I'm going to do today is mine, so I'll give you a demonstration of how that looks, can basically choose to allow kind of features to be available to your LinkedIn Google Ads account. So that might be remarketing, for example, so you can create remarketing lists based on viewers of your channel. Um, it can be the uh, the engagement that you get, so um, the actions earned um, from the video ads from the link channels and also your kind of your view count so you can have a look at the um, organic metrics for your videos as well you can actually link more than one google ads account to your youtube channel and you can link more than one youtube channel to a google ads account so i'm just going to show you how to go forward and do this so if you move into um either your google ads account so your normal interface, if you pop over to this top right hand side with the tools and settings options and you've got under setup, you've got linked accounts. So if you click on through to here, this is where you're going to link, link any kind of um, third party um, other interface to your Google Ads account. So if you just scroll down, you'll come to the YouTube option, which is just here. And then if you click on details, you'll go through the option to view the link. Now, in order to do it, um, you either you need to know the 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 email address, the details of the person who can grant access to this YouTube channel. So just be mindful of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and you need to get the channel details in order to to add it to the account. So if you click onto your, your own YouTube channel that you want to link, you'll see in the URL the name of the channel. Um, so I'm just going to copy this information here. There we go. And when I click add a channel, it'll say search for a channel or paste the URL. So if you know, you know the channel name, 
you can pop that in or you can paste the URL. I usually just do the URL, it's quicker and easier, but whatever works best for you. And then this is where you're gonna choose um, whether or not it's yourself that owns the channel or if someone else owns the channel. So sometimes if you are setting this up for um, a client, for example, so if you're an agency or you're a freelancer and you're running some PPC activity for a client, this is where you'll choose the option for someone else owns this channel and you'll have to get the relevant information from those that person to proceed. In this case, I'm gonna pop in, I own this channel and then you'll get a little um, update saying continue YouTube to complete the account linking process. So then I'll click this option to go to YouTube. And what it's going to do is it's going to load up um, this option. So you can have a link name. Um, so I'm just going to put YouTube channel. Um, and then this is where, where I was just talking about at the beginning, where you can choose what information you share back. So it says here, the link Google Ads account will have access to the following features. So view accounts, remarketing, and engagement. You can untick if you don't want something to be shared. Um, but you know, for the purposes of marketing, um, it's best to share all information. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that link button there. So it says account link saved. Um, so I'm just gonna pop back into my YouTube um, interface on Google Ads and come over and refresh here to see if that's up updated. Let's see if there's any further instructions. So just bear with me one moment. So there we go. So straight away, um, I've got now, so if I navigate, so the place that we're in at the minute is we're in the setup and the linked accounts and then into the YouTube section. So now I can see I've got this channel linked to my Google Ads account. I've got permissions to see the view accounts, we marketing, engagement. And then obviously it's really straightforward that if you do for, every, in, for any reason in the future need to remove the account, you have this unlink option here. So I was to click unlink, it'll ask you if you want to unlink the channel and then you can go ahead and do that. Um, so it's really straightforward to, to, to get set up. So that's the first part that you need to do before we then proceed on to actually creating the exciting stuff, which is the YouTube ads campaigns. Hi guys. So let's take a look at YouTube and setting up YouTube ads through the Google ads interface. So I probably don't need to tell you obviously how huge YouTube is, how big the audience is, you know, there's a million different benefits um, to why you'd want to use YouTube ads specifically. Um, obviously, it's a very visual platform. Um, you know, you can bring your, bring your ads to life, I guess, with um, video content. It's very exciting. There's a lot of different things you can do with YouTube ads. It's got very um, advanced over the years. Um, there's so many different options available to us. Um, from YouTube ads and what we can do through the Google Ads interface in order to advertise with YouTube. So before we get started today, um, I just want to kind of talk a little bit about um, the different options that you have um, for advertising um, through YouTube ads. There's various different ad formats and um, there's a lot of things you can do. Today we're going to be focusing on kind of what I'd call the basic setups of YouTube ad campaigns. So we're going to be looking at the likes of your skippable in-stream ads and your non-skippable in-stream ads. Um, and then obviously there is other areas that are more, you know, potentially not used as an initial setup, but you should definitely be looking at. And um, we're not going to cover those in this video today, um, but it is something that you should be aware of. So you've got things like your um, video discovery ads, you've got um, your masthead ads, you've got bumper ads, all these different things um, that are available to you for, for YouTube. Um, so in terms of the things that we're going to be talking through today, um, um, let's just talk a little bit about the kind of technicalities before I go into showing you the screen share and exactly how you would set up the YouTube ads campaign. So for the likes of skippable in-stream ads, it's kind of in the name, um, but this format basically, um, it, it's best to be used um, for kind of video content that you have that you want to promote either um, before, during or after other videos on YouTube. Okay, so skippable in-stream ads, basically they either play before, during or after the videos. Um, 
after five seconds the viewer has the option to skip the ad so you will have seen this yourself before um you know you'll go on youtube you'll search for something you're about to watch a, a video something else which is the ad will come on beforehand and after a few after the five seconds you get that button in the bottom right hand corner that says skip ads so that's basically google ads skippable in stream ads so it gives the it gives the user the opportunity to kind of skip past your ad um so skippable in-stream ads basically appear on YouTube watch pages and across websites and apps that run on Google video partner sites. Um, you, the way in where it works um, from a spend perspective is you pay when a viewer watches 30 seconds of your video or the full duration of the video if it's shorter than 30 seconds. So for example, um, if your video was 20 seconds and someone watched that full video, you get charged after they watch the whole the full video. You can also be charged if someone interacts with your video. So whichever one comes first. Um, so if they kind of click through on a call to action, for example, you'll be charged um, then as well. And that's CPV bidding. So it's cost per view bidding. And then the other types of bidding that you can do, um, CPV is usually kind of the, the, the go-to, um, but you can actually do target CPM, um, maximize conversions and target CPA in which you'll pay based on impressions that you receive uh, that you receive so the other format that we want to look at as well is going to be the non-skippable uh, in stream ads and that again is in the name so it's the opposite of skippable these ads a uh, user cannot skip so uh, non-skippable in stream ads you know you it's the same situation as, as skippable it's, you're going to promote it um before during after other videos that are on youtube um but you want viewers to kind of see your whole video everything that you want to see without the option of skipping it so non-skippable in-stream ads have to be 15 seconds or shorter um otherwise you can't upload it and um, that's the that's the criteria for it um, and that gives it that allows it so that the viewer doesn't have the option to skip again you will have seen this potentially if you've used youtube that you've seen an ad and you know sometimes it can be frustrating if you see an ad that's not relevant to you so obviously we'll talk about targeting later but um you know if you see an ad it's not relevant to you you're not interested but you don't have that option to skip you've got to sit through 15 seconds or whatever the video length is before you actually get onto the content that you were looking for so that is the um, non-skippable variation uh, ad format for YouTube. And again, non-skippable, they they show across YouTube videos and websites and any apps running on the Google video partners. Non-skippable ads um, use a target CPM bidding. So you are basically paying uh, based on impressions. So a cost per thousand impressions. Um, the real kind of goals behind these formats youtube non-skippable skippable is it's going to be kind of your brand awareness and your reach um you know you're doing that to kind of get you get your messaging out there get your brand out there so there's a, a few different um considerations that you should take that you should think about when creating your content for your youtube ads um so we'll we'll look at that in a little bit more detail later so just looking into how to go ahead and set this up so to get started if you want to pop on over to your google ads interface and it's the same as you ever would you're going to click on the new campaign button option don't worry about selecting a goal right now you can if you want but i'm just going to go ahead and create it without the guidance of the goal so today um instead of going down the search option we are going down the video option so we're creating a, a video campaign type so like I mentioned at the beginning um, of the video, there is a lot of different options available um, for YouTube advertising. So, you know, there's these other areas. Um, you've got drive conversions, ad sequence, shopping, all this. But we're going to look at kind of the custom video campaign. And there's the non-skippable here, which we just talked about. I'm going to click on custom so I can show you what um, the skippable in-stream ad looks like. And um, this also covers if you were to be running bumper of video discovery ads as well. Um, but today I'm going to talk you through the skippable in stream setup. So continue through. So it's going to be the same as um, any other campaign that you've set up before. You're going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this new test, for example. 
Um, so it's got me a big strategy here, maximum CPV, or you can switch it to target CPM. I'm going to put it on a max CPV for now. Um, feel free, obviously, to change your bidding strategy in line with what you feel fits you best. And then with YouTube, you're going to have um, a campaign total budget here. So um, this is really helpful, actually, because it, it's, um, it's good in terms of, you know, managing your budgets um you, you won't kind of get that overspend risk and um, because you're not setting a daily budget you can drop down and uh, change it to a daily but normally for youtube i always set it to a campaign total so let's just say we've got a thousand pound what we're going to do is we're going to pop in with start and end date so if we were starting the youtube campaign today we'd have it today or you can actually choose a date in the future so let's say i want this to run from monday for example and i want it to run until the end of september so i'm popping that end date and then what i'll do is google will automatically calculate how much you'll be spending per day based on the dates that you've popped in so a thousand pound campaign total is similar to about 25 pound 64 a day for 39 days so that's telling you exactly how much you're going to be spending on average per day over this campaign duration um, so now obviously you've got the the networks options i leave these all in um you can choose to opt out of you know youtube videos for example um but you need to stay i i, I recommend you stay with all these um settings left on so um the location whatever location that you want to target um, I'm going to leave it as the UK for me. You can pop in a specific language as well. Typically, I would say that whatever video um, content language, uh, whatever the, the language is in the video, um, is what I would suggest your language setting is for Google Ads. So if your video is in Spanish, pop it in Spanish. If it's in Chinese, whatever it may be, just make it kind of relevant. Um, you can leave it as all languages, but I'm going to pop it in as English um, because that's what my video is in. Just to try and keep that relevance there okay so moving on we've got the inventory type um i always leave it as standard inventory it's what's recommended you can choose to have a look at the other two limited or expanded um so it kind of just it just limits or broadens out where your content's um liable to show so have a read through those and you know whether or not you want your videos to show it's, it's things kind of like you know your exclusion on sensitive content and things like that so if you um if you have a brand that's um you know you need to be really careful with in terms of tone of voice and where things are appearing you might want to go for a tighter targeting option um but if you don't you know you may go for the recommended or expanded and moving on you've got straight into your ad group setup so i'm going to go through and create a name for that so i'm just going to call it ad group one um, obviously name these as you always would with a correct name and convention so you know exactly what's in the campaign in our group and it's easy to manage for yourself. Demographics, so this is where you can kind of start targeting up your audience. So as I mentioned earlier on this video, um, you know, you've probably been one of those people, you will have been, everybody has, who, you know, searches for something on YouTube, gets that non-skippable um ad in front of the video that you're looking for and it's frustrating because it's irrelevant to you you're not interested in it and you want to skip ahead but you can't so this comes down to your targeting and this is where you need to think about where your audience is what are they looking for and will they be interested in what you've got to say from your brand's perspective so obviously everybody would love to think that everyone wants to sit and watch their their brand uh, ad and you know be engaged but unfortunately that's not the case we need to target the people that are relevant to our business and um who's going to be engaged by the content that we're sharing so this is where um you can kind of drill down into your audience and you're already going to have a really good understanding of who your audience are and exactly who you want to get in front of so there's loads of ways in which you can target um, through YouTube, similar to what we'd have um, through kind of search audience targeting and um, kind of GDN style targeting. But you've got your basics, you've got your demographics, you've got your audience uh, segments, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, you can go ahead and start adding in your target and which you want to attract. So, for example, 
Um, I might only want to get in front of people who are, I don't know, 18 to 44 because I know that typically that's who engage best with my brand. Um, I want to get more people like that. Um, um, it might be that, you know, there's always going to be that category of unknown as well. Um, some people choose to leave this in because, you know, you don't know, you might want to target those as well. But um, if you want your targeting to be quite strict, stick to the stuff that you know. So I might take off the unknown from the gender. Uh, parents or non-parents didn't does really make a difference to me. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Then you've got your targeting in terms of kind of keywords, topics, placements, etc. Um, so you might want to do some keyword targeting. I might want to put in PPC or um, learn Google ads, whatever it may be. You can pop in keyword targeting. You've got topics that you can target. So same as um, you know all Google's kind of predefined audience list. So different topics. So I might put in I don't know business for example. Um, this is just a really quick example of what I might target. Obviously, I want to make sure that you guys at home are, you know, doing some real research around who your audiences are and how you want to target those. It's also important as well that obviously you've got different ad groups. So this is just ad group one. Don't feel like every different type of targeting method needs to be housed into one. You should be breaking out your targeting so you can understand which audiences work best. Yeah. So. Moving on to your bidding, you've got your maximum CPV. So this is how much you are willing to bid per view. Um, so you can pop, pop in, you know, what you feel is a, a realistic bid for you. So I'm going to pop in two pound for per view. It might be that, um, you know, YouTube is often, obviously you're going to get a lot more exposure for kind of a lower cost. Um, but it may be that, you know, you get it for 10 pence, you may get it for 30 pence, you may get it for 2 pence, you may get it for 1 pence, whatever it is. Um, but make sure you have a, a kind of CPV, a maximum CPV that you're willing to go to in order to get that view. Just to note that if you do max, um, they target CPM button, that's t cost per thousand views. So remember that your bid here is going to be a lot higher. I would put like a baseline of £10 in, for example, for a, for a CPM uh, model. Okay, so then on to setting up the actual video ad. So this is where we're going to create your ad and this is what's going to show on YouTube in front of or between or after other videos, video content on the YouTube um, chat interface. So you need to put your YouTube URL in for this. So um, that's just going back to your uh, whatever video it is that you want to promote. So I'm just going to grab this off screen, just pick a video and then I'm going to pop it um, the link of that video. So if you click onto a video on YouTube, um, whatever the URL is for that, you can just pop it and paste it in here. There we go. Boom. Done. So I've got a Google Ads account set up. I'm going to advertise that. Yeah. And what it starts to do is <clears throat> it'll show you what it's going to look like here on the right hand side. Um, so this is how it'll look on YouTube. So the video I format that I want is going to be skippable in stream, which is what we've been talking about. Um, and you can see um, here what it's going to look like on YouTube, on a mobile, on a desktop, on a, ta on a tablet, on a desktop. Um, so you can just scroll through those and have a little look. So this is where you need to start putting in your information about what you want people to see on the ad, what action you want them to take, um, and where you want them to land when they click on an ad. So for my case, if somebody sees my ad on YouTube, I want them to kind of take the action of, um, so you can click this call to action button here. And the annoying thing I have to say about YouTube uh, ads is it is very restrictive in terms of the character count. So you can see here your headlines 10 and your, he uh, sorry, your call to action is 10 and your headlines 15. So your call to action is going to go here. <coughs> your headline is going to be this bit here. <coughs> Excuse me. So. It can be really frustrating if you've got a quite an enticing call to action and it doesn't fit. Um, so try and think of um, something that's short, snappy, the usual kind of book now, get in touch, whatever it may be. Um, so I'm going to just put book now as my call to action. So you can see it's changed here to book now. And then my headline might be learn with, I know freelancer success won't fit, so I might just put F to S. Yeah, so that fits and you've got 
you've got it there learn with FJS. so you can see what the kind of how the ad's going to start looking as you start filling in this information so your final url is going to be where you want people to direct to if they actually click on your link so i'd want them to go to my website so i'm just going to copy the website details and i'm going to pop that final url in there now your display url comes here and this you can edit slightly so you might want to get rid of the www dot so you can see it shortens there um you might want to get rid of the decor uk um and then it's a little bit more pretty on the eyes i guess if it's not kind of being cut off and um, so just remember your display url you can play around with a little bit um your final url has to be obviously where you're sending your traffic to so make sure that that's correct and then you've got the options for compa companion banners and um, i'm not going to go into this in detail on this video um but <clears throat> you can be auto generated by um using your youtube uh using your channel banner and that's what's recommended by google anyway but you know some people and um, do wish to create kind of a bespoke companion banner, companion banner to go with their ad so it's that's the setup pretty basic and straightforward and um, so you can go around and, and play around with that you can click on this preview ad on youtube so if you click this it'll open up what it's going to look like um so Hi guys. this okay, is so a link to, we are going to basically navigate. my video and that's where it's going to go to um and then just name your ad um you can keep it as ad one or you can name it based on what you've put in so you might call it um book now learn with f2 uh, so that when you're analyzing your data later and um, you can see um quite quickly which ad messaging is working better for you so that's going to be the setup for you so once you've created the campaign um i'm going to click cancel at this point because i don't actually want to go ahead and create this campaign but once you've gone through and done it um it'll obviously be ready to go depending on your start dates that you've done it'll go through the normal um approval process that google ads always have um so just keep an eye on everything and make sure that there's no disapprovals for any reason um and everything's all legitimate um, you can then go ahead and kind of jump into that campaign and create additional ad groups with different targeting, different ads, etc. And uh, just keep testing all your different formats until you get what you want from your YouTube campaign. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, good luck with your YouTube setup. Um, drop us a note in the comments um, about how you get on. And just really quickly before we go, I just want to show you, and I'm going to drop this link in the notes as well. Just what um, a chat, like a YouTube video that's really useful um, if you want to ever run bumper ads. So it's a different ad format on the YouTube um, ads interface. So if you ever want to run bumper ads, there's this link here, uh, 20 great bumper ads for YouTube. And it just gives you a kind of an indication of what you should be doing with your content creation from a video perspective when you're creating things um, like bumper ads. So these are six second ads. So it shows you how much you can kind of get in six seconds and what impact that's, that, that has as well. So I'll drop that in the notes for you and check it out because it, it is really interesting, really fun to watch and um, might give you some creative ideas.